for our first message. I expect to hear a motorcycle here. Vroom, vroom. Leader of the pack by Mr. Uh, Sean Witt. Okay? Mr. Witt. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Unfortunately, it's not about motorcycles. Sorry to mislead you. It's part of the fun, though. So pretty crazy if the weather out there, which kind of goes hand in hand with my message. So that'll kind of a good thing as well. So welcome to everybody who's here. Uh, glad you all could make it here safely. It was a little bit crazy out there, like I was saying, but we all made it here safely. And I can hear the bomb in the background going down like it does every week. <laughs> it's about ready to explode. There it is. Okay, with that, yes. Okay, so this is a pack. Sometimes people call these fanny packs and different things like that, but we in our family call this a pack. I'm the leader of the pack. This is Samuel's pack. Uh, some of you may know that Samuel has a peanut allergy. So we carry an EpiPen in here. So it's very important that we take good care of this pack. Uh, I'll tell you that we've gone through many of these packs. Uh, I don't know how many of you know how fragile these things are, uh, but they have a temperature. It says on the side, you're supposed to keep it between 68 degrees uh, to roughly 77 degrees. Pretty hard to maintain that. So we have to be careful with these things. We've left them in the car before where it's 90 degrees. Uh, we've left it in the car when it's been 30 degrees. So both ends of the spectrum, these things become toast. So you have to replace it when it shows that it's discolored. So this one is, obvious, this one is a bad one, so I've brought it as a reference. But uh, we've gone through a few of these. And, uh, you know, EpiPens, it's uh, a type of ep or nephrin. Uh, it's an auto-injector. I think Ken would probably be able to uh, demonstrate it better than I can, so I'm not going to really show. I am going to say, though, that it's, this is a trainer, but you basically just stab it in your thigh and hold it for like three seconds to get the injection in, and then you rub it, and then obviously you're going to call 911. That's Samuel's pack, and we carry an EpiPen in there. So, you know, you keep this in case there's an anaphylactic situation. Thankfully, we've never had to use it. We've always been able to just give Samuel Benadryl when he has had issue. Uh, he's never been, like, really in contact with peanuts to the point where we've had to use it, like I said, but we had uh, Benadryl has helped. And that's kind of the first line of defense before you use the EpiPen. So, like I said, hysterically, hysterically, historically and hysterically, because I get hysterical, because these things are expensive. But luckily, insurance covers these for the most part. These have gone up like 400% since 2007. Uh, without insurance, they can be like 300 bucks a piece. So we've been blessed that we've had insurance that so we can get these things replaced. But a lot of times you have to call the doctor and get a prescription to get it going. And we've even got like a thing that it, we put in his pack to keep him warm or actually cool. It cools it down to add water to it. So when he's out and about in the summertime, it keeps it cool. So with all of these things getting destroyed, um, Samuel and I recently went to Kentucky. And because I haven't been really invested in these things like I should be, because it's so easy to get them replaced uh, through insurance, uh, kind of been lackadaisical about these things, even though this could save his life. We got all the stuff out of the car and put it into the hotel room, and I went back out there, and it was in the evening. Samuel's pack was on the floor of the car. So I'm like, wow, we're in Kentucky. What am I going to do? I uh, have to get another one. So. Uh, got on the phone, talked to Kim, and she's like, well, did you think about maybe uh, just calling the insurance, first of all, and see what we can do? So I called, and actually I called back to the doctor. It was after hours, but I got a hold of one of the after hours nurses. Thankfully, 
she was able to fill the prescription. She called it into an after hours uh, pharmacy. So I had to drive downtown Kentucky to a hospital, had a hard time finding where I was going, but got inside, had to pay $20 to get another one. So I'm a little bit more invested now because it's costing me some money as well. Um, should be already invested anyway, just because of this saving his life. But, um, you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm having to go do all this stuff, so I'm not getting any peace in the middle of the night trying to do this. But I uh, went ahead and got it done. Thankfully, I was able to get one, and it was covered with insurance. Just ended up costing more money than usual. So with all this said, let's go to Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 11. So... Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It is. It has no commander, it has no overseer or ruler, yet it stores up provisions in the summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. So what do I take away from that verse? As a leader of my family, I need to make sure that I'm fully invested and aware at all times preparing and seeing possible danger ahead. Danger, Will Robertson. You know, I, I should have made sure that this was protected. It should have been strapped on me. This has straps on it. I can strap it on me and take care of it. You know, it's understandable when you're 17, you don't pay attention as much, but I'm a little older than that. And I should be making sure that I'm watching what is going on of this pack. So it's a matter of life and death. It could be, you know, it could be a situation where if this thing's not working correctly, you know, he may need it. So I have to make sure it's working right. So having the priority of recognizing that this is a problem is a good step in the right direction. And I can't beat myself up for the past mistakes of EpiPen's gone bad, you know, in the cold and in the heat. Just got to move forward and make sure we take care of them from now on. So another example I'd like to present is when I went up to Alyssa's place, we were on our way to Kentucky. We stopped there and um, last year Alyssa came down uh, for Thanksgiving. I think it was just over a year ago. and She uh, was driving at night before she came down and she hit a curb and blew a tire out. And she got the tires replaced there. We came here and had another situation with the tires. So we got her tires replaced. So to make a long story short, she had new tires on her car just a year ago. So I figured, oh, her tires are fine. So when we got there, I just looking over her car, I looked and the whole inside of her tires was worn bare. Like you could see the threads starting to come out. So I went and I alerted her. I was like, hey, you're going to need to get some tires on your car. Your front end alignment's way out. And they're getting ready to drive to Kentucky as well, her and Christopher. Thankfully, Christopher's car was in good running condition, so they ended up just taking her car. But the whole point of this is, in the past, before the feast, there was a lot of times with my family, I would wait to the last minute for car maintenance. We ended up dropping a lot of money on tithe, fixing our vehicles. So it's, it's an important thing to me to make sure our vehicles are running well and taken care of. So I want to pass that on to Alyssa. Like, really got to watch this kind of thing. Pay attention to your car, make sure that it's in good working order. She did get the oil changed before her trip, so that's a good thing. But uh, she really needed to make sure that the vehicle was roadworthy before she left. You know, it's easy to put things off, but it doesn't seem important at the time, maybe. Well, maybe you got new tires on your car, you don't think much about it, but you got to make sure that as you're proceeding forward, that you're taking the time to make sure these things are working correctly. Another example I'd like to give you, I won't try to give you too many, but um, we bought a desk for Kim. Uh, this is right around the same time we got COVID. So I'll, I'll use the COVID excuse, but on her desk, it didn't come with the keyboard rack that you put the keyboard on. So her keyboard's up like this. And I used to be on an ergonomic team with General Electric we'd go around making sure everybody's desks are set up correctly. So I know better. And I just kept putting it off. I'm like, hey, Kim, I'll take care of that later. Uh, and she's like this on the keyboard to the point where finally her shoulder was so painful she had to go to the chiropractor to get it checked out. 
And as of yesterday, she was crying in pain because of this horrible shoulder that she had had. And if I had just taken the time to fix that, you know, be on top of things, she wouldn't have had that come to that point. So, because of my inaction, it affects other people as well. So, the fact that I don't watch this to make sure it's taken care of, it could affect Samuel. Just keeping up on our priorities and such is a good thing to do. You know, this might sound cheesy, but as a leader of the pack, I have to have the Boy Scout motto drilled in me that always be prepared. It's important to be prepared. But what does that mean to each of you? You may be thinking, I don't have to carry an EpiPen around. I don't have kids at home. I'm not responsible for, for that type of thing, et cetera, you know, of what I've explained. Well, to that I would say that each of us is a leader of a pack. It may not be this pack, but uh, maybe the pack is yourself. Or it can be people that God has placed in your life that you could be in charge of. You never know how you might impact someone, even just setting a Christ-like example to them. So you could be a leader of the pack in that aspect. It's easy to get overwhelmed thinking of all the things that possibly we need to be prepared for. And if we're being honest, can we really be totally prepared for anything and everything that could possibly happen? Well, the answer, of course, is no. But God takes into account and provides insight to the important things and where our focus should be. So we need to be looking to him to see where does our focus need to be to be prepared. So speaking of preparedness, let's go to Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall work in your labor, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of our Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male or your female servant nor your animals nor your foreigner residing in your towns. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This is a direct commandment from God on being prepared on a daily basis. It shows how important it is to our Father for us to be prepared. You know, to be able to keep the Sabbath day holy, we have to have the end mind we have to have the end in mind when we're preparing throughout these six days to be ready for the Sabbath. I'll admit, unless we are intentional in preparation, the Sabbath sneaks up on us, even though it's every seven days. It still can sneak up on us. Um, you would think that we would have it down by now, but I'm going to tell myself, last night, because of the storm coming, uh, Samuel and I thought, man, we better get to the store and get some stuff. And of course, when you get there, there's not much on the shelf because, uh, like they say about Travis Myers, he's one of the greatest bread salesmen. He goes all the breads off the shelves. So we went and we looked and we got a few things that we could use, but we waited to the last minute. And why was I there? Because I waited to the last minute. <laughs> all right, so let's go to uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. This is the parable of the ten virgins. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bride's groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Like I was at Walmart last night. But while they were... So while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins were ready, went in to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. 
Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. So I'll be the first to say it's not easy being prepared. Life gets messy and we're being pulled in so many directions these days. We really are. But we have to cut through the noise. We have to think about what is truly important. What has to be done that is urgent and what is not as important at the time? We only have so many hours in a day and it's very easy to squander those times. You know, there's 24 hours in a day, but it's very easy to squander that time if we're not being mindful of it. And time goes by fast. Just think of how much time has gone by, you know, over the year 2021, how quickly it flew by. It seemed like it was three years with COVID going on, but it also flew by as well. You know, it's, it's hard to believe that the pandemic started just, you know, over two years ago now. Time does really fly. Speaking of time flying, um, can you believe we're only 12 weeks away now from Passover season? Uh, basically 89 days away. So we're about 12 weeks away, like I was saying. And we are certainly told to prepare ourselves. So we need to be preparing but there's another aspect of Passover service I'd like to take a look at as well. So let's go to John 13, verses 12 through 17. So this is at the foot washing. When he had finished washing their feet, this is Jesus, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that, I, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Notice that in that verse, 17, there's a hidden gem that is easily glossed over. If you don't take the time to break it down, it says, if you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Did you catch that? There's a blessing to be found, but you have to know what things to do, and you have to do them. This is part of being prepared. You know, there's a saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. In my example of the EpiPen, I knew that I had to keep it at a certain temperature. There's like 10 degrees there each direction. Or else it'll be no longer usable as toast. And I've known from past experiences how easy it is to forget that the EpiPen's in the car and could be ruined because of the temperature. However, even if this knowledge and experience, I still continue to have these pins get destroyed. I failed to do anything proactive about it, such as clipping it on, which should help because it'd be on my person, not throwing it in the back seat, thinking, oh, hey, I got this, and then forget about it. Uh, could have strapped it to the luggage when we went into the hotel to make sure that as I took the luggage in that it'd be there. As a result, I did not reap the blessing of having peace when we got to Kentucky. I was on the phone after hours, calling doctors, trying to locate a pharmacy, uh, getting a prescription filled, driving in the middle of the night, doing all the things I would rather not be doing. I'd rather be in the bed sleeping, which would have been a much better place to be. All of these things could have been avoided if I had did the things I knew to do. So I'm not trying to beat myself up. I'm just saying, if we know to do these things, we need to do them. So what about you? You sitting here listening today. If you think back, are there things you could think of where you knew to do something but didn't. You know, spiritually speaking, this is true of all of us. Turn with me now to Romans 3, verses 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So, how do we know to do the things we need to do in order to do them? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 to 13. 
And now, Israel, what does the Lord God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience in Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. He's doing these things for our own good. Sounds simple, right? (laughs) Where do we even start? There are several scriptures that would be excellent starting points for each of us, and perhaps your journey would start with a different scripture. But I suggest that a great starting point is found in the following two scriptures regarding wisdom. And that first scripture is James 1, verse 5. If anyone lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. And wisdom provides the foundation for being prepared. Let's go to Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent, wise person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Once you have the wisdom or knowledge of what to do, you are left with the task of actually doing it. So once you figure out what you need to do, you need to follow through and do it. Sometimes it may be simple, but other times it may seem like a daunting task. But we have a gracious Father who helps us to accomplish what we're called to do. So, as you can see in the following scriptures, I'd like to go to uh, Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. He's wanting a good purpose to be within us. And expanding upon that, go to Philippians 4.13, please. For I can do all things, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. We can do these things with Christ's help. He can work through us to make sure these things happen. So, referring back to the title of my message, Leader of the Pack. This has a dual meaning. So I already discussed how it relates to my being in charge of my son's EpiPen. But did you know that dogs in the wild travel in packs as well? I mean, a lot of us have probably heard about how a group of wolves is a pack. You've heard the term, a pack of wolves. Well, the interesting thing is that there's only one leader in this pack. Whenever the leader or alpha dog goes, the others follow. There's the alpha dog ahead of everybody following them. The leader is in charge and protects the pack. Does this sound familiar? He goes ahead and makes the way. Christ is the leader of our pack. For the joy he set before him, he endured the stake, and he made a way for us to be saved. He is the alpha and the omega, and he's returning. He's going to come back to this world and set everything straight. He's prepared the way for us. And we are preparing for that day. And we'll be richly rewarded for that preparation at his return. So we need to be preparing for his return. In conclusion, I would like to go to Revelation 22, verses 12 through 13. Or 14, I should say. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. 